jealous people do not like the level of privacy and the level of protection you now put around your life. Jealous people absolutely hate boundaries. And when you put boundaries in place that put them on the outside, they just do not like it. They look at you as if you have done something wrong to them because you no longer allow them into spaces where they do not belong. When you put boundaries in place with people who used to treat you badly, speak to you disrespectfully, and treat you like you're an afterthought, when you suddenly put a guard of protection and peace around your life, when you begin to think more clearly and understand that those people cannot be within your close circle, when you begin to withhold information from them, and I'm going to stay on that, the withholding information part from them. Jealous, envious people, sometimes they go under the radar for a little bit. They can be very secretive. They can come off as very nice in the beginning. Their jealousy and their envy can be hidden for a little while. They might be, you know, nice to you. They may offer help to you. They might always be there. And more times than not, they're always there to listen. If you need to talk to anybody, you need encouragement, come to me. They are those kind of people a lot of times. And what you find with those kind of people when they're jealous and envious and they have a toxic, miserable spirit, the more you talk to them, the more your name is heard out in the streets. The more your name and your situation is critiqued by people you don't even know. People who are envious and jealous and miserable in general, they are always looking for the opportunity to spread your personal information around. And when you no longer allow them to do that and you begin to value your privacy and value your well-being and value your time, you put a hedge around yourself and to keep them out, they don't like that. Suddenly, when you become a more private person, and I have spoken about being more private, and I'm going to hit the link to that video in the description of this video. Being more private protects you from the venom of jealous, toxic people. But when jealous people, when toxic people realize that they are now on the outside and not on the inside, they're going to begin to treat you funny. And you have to get used to that. When suddenly they're in your presence and you're not spilling all of your business, you don't have diarrhea of the mouth where you're just giving them all of the tea about your business or somebody else's business. When suddenly now you're just talking about the weather like, so, hey, yeah, it's nice out there. They say it's going to be 80 degrees today. Very nice weather. I might go to the pumpkin patch, you know. I might, you know, take the kids to the park, you know. You're just talking about general things. No more giving them your information. With people who are jealous and envious, and I need you to understand this. Do not give them your personal information. If you're going through something, if you're going through something in your relationship, if you're going through something on your job, if you're dealing with some kind of struggle, if that person has a tendency to suddenly allow other people to know what you're going through and you'll know that from the fact that you tell them and now you're hearing it all over from different people, that is not a person you should be confiding in. Yes, gossip is of the devil. Gossip is not God, okay? And for people to tell you things like, you can count on me, you can rely on me, I'm here for you. If you need to talk, come to me. And then suddenly when you talk to them, those same things you talked about are now spread within the community. That is a person that you need to avoid. And it's not to say that that person is jealous. Some people are just miserable and toxic and they're miserable in their own life, and they have to be busy bodies in everybody else's life. Those kind of people, especially when you're trying to do better in life, when you're leveling up in some way, when you're building a business, when you're really establishing yourself as a woman, you don't have time to be around people who are constantly going to subject you to the critique and ridicule of other people. You don't need that behavior in your life. So have any more private life, jealous people will not like because now you don't give them anything to talk about. They have to find something or someone else to talk about. For years, you might have been the topic of their conversation. They might have depended on you to do something messy, to be in something messy, to say something messy so that they can have something to talk about at family functions, at the park, during reunions. You were a topic of their discussion. But when you quiet, and I think many of us can, 
you know, practice this more often. Learn how to be quiet. Learn how to talk about, you know, things that are happening in the community, things that are happening in the world. There are a lot of things to talk about right now with it being an election year. Talk about those things. Leave your name out of your own mouth, okay? And this is something I had to learn myself because for me, I used to be the kind of person that this, somebody would say, how are you doing? I couldn't say I'm doing well. I couldn't just say I'm doing well and leave it at that. I would have to say I'm doing well by the grace of God, but you know, this is happening. And then on the job, this happened and you know, I was trying to do this and I got a letter in the mail and they said, you know, I was that kind of person where it's like within the course of five minute interaction, I've given this person my entire life's history. And this is not just a person who might have been jealous. Sometimes people just don't need to know all of that. You know, if you don't know them that well, you don't need to divulge all that information. And I had to learn this over time. But it becomes more dangerous when you divulge all this information to somebody who is a jealous, envious, miserable spirit. And they're always looking for some way, somehow to tarnish you in the eyes of other people. And you can tell this by the fact that when you say things, all of a sudden other people know. But sometimes in our naivety as women and sometimes in our overly unbotheredness, we just let things go and we don't look at the red flags and the warning signs that people give us that they're a snake. And we're trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. And sometimes I've heard people say, you know, well, that's just how they are. That's just him. That's just her. Well, you know what? They can be that way, but be that way to themselves. Like, don't make you a subject or a topic for them to have to spew out their negativity. You know, let them let somebody else be their coffee table talk. You know what I mean? Like, stop telling people who are negative so much stuff about yourself. And when somebody is jealous, you can tell it because when you tell them things about you, they're not trying to help you find a solution. They just dig deeper into the things that are already hard for you. See, people who are jealous and envious and miserable, they don't look for solutions. They like to escalate problems. They like to get you thinking more deeply into the reason why things happen and not ever offer you a solution as into how you can make things better. That's one sign, one major sign, one major red flag that you can tell you're dealing with a negative, wicked spirit. And if they're not jealous, if anything, they're absolutely miserable because they're not solution-based thinkers. And I can't stand people who are not solution-based thinkers. And I'm not saying can't stand as in, I know everybody thinks differently, but I'm talking about the miserable people, the jealous, toxic people, the ones who mean you no good. They're often never solution-based. They will sit there and listen to you wallow and whine and vent and be miserable. And they will never offer you words of encouragement. And you know why? It's because they find your misery entertaining. They find your lack of discipline and your lack of self-control and your inability to keep things private. They find that entertaining. And when you wake up to that sad reality as a woman, you will realize, oh no, I'm not for anybody's entertainment. I'm not for anybody enjoyment other than my husband, okay? I'm not going to put myself out there like that and cause people to make me a subject of their conversation in a negative way. Absolutely not. Start keeping your life a little bit more private, especially when you're dealing with miserable, jealous people. Don't give them ammunition to use against you. And don't be so desperate and hard up for friendships and relationships that you confide in snakes. Pray about it. Look, I know that's like the most cliche thing that somebody can say, as you know, but it's true. Pray that God will send, will send you somebody that you can confide in. People that will be in your circle that you can really talk to and vent to. I had to do that and God did it. Because the people that I found myself turning to the most, it's not that they were jealous or anything like that. It's just sometimes there were some things that I saw that just were not right. And I'm like, I don't want to be a victim. So I'm going to scale back a little bit. Keep things to myself. Keep it between me and God. You know, I know as feminine women, we are more emotional. We like to, you know, we tell people how we feel and all of that. But even in that, you have to use wisdom and just know who and what you're dealing with. 
You know, you don't want to set yourself up to be in a worse off situation than what you're already in. Okay, so don't be so, you know, emotional to where now you're confided in people or confiding in people that are now going to have you looking a certain way, you know, because I know and all these thoughts are coming to me. I used to be so overly emotional and over, you know, speaking about my life that I made things seem worse than what they were. You know, sometimes as women, we could speak about things in a way where it's like, you know, something silly. I'll say I ran out of coffee and I never have any coffee and this happens and that happens. And next thing you know, you got people walking away thinking that you can't afford to buy coffee. You don't have no cup and you don't have a pot. To... <laughs> you know, you, you give that impression by how you speak sometimes. So we have to really be mindful of how we're presenting ourselves in the public eye in our heightened state of emotion because people who are jealous and miserable and toxic they're already looking for something to make you kind of look bad in the eyes of other others they like your misery in a way it's entertaining and we just can't give them that ammunition okay so be mindful that you keep a hedge of protection privacy around your life and stop telling jealous envious people all of your information. And if the person is miserable and a gossip, definitely stop giving them all of your information. And if you want to do a little test to see if they're a gossip, tell them something that you don't mind getting out and see how many people find out about it. All right? Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, Put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.